hello my loves how are you all today welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new my name is Silvina and in today's video we're going to continue with the fashion houses style dissection series and today's the day of Saint Laurent so we're going to do a little dissection of the Saint Laurent style and then I'm also going to share with you how to get the look and some outfit ideas in the past video we talked about fashion designer brand stylistic identity and this video is a continuation of that one so if you're interested in this topic um you can go watch it after this video obviously i will leave it up here okay so first let's do a little historical rundown of the saint laurent maison yves saint laurent born in algeria to french parents Charles and Lucien André Mathieu Saint Laurent displayed a passion for fashion and style from a very early age. In his teen years, he won a fashion design competition, catching the attention of Vogue France's editor Michel de Brunoff, who you know inspired him and encouraged him to pursue fashion. So Saint Laurent enrolled in the Chambre Syndicale de la Haute Couture, and through Brunoff, he met Christian Dior. Joining the House of Dior in 1954, he at first, you know, did very mundane tasks, but eventually was encouraged to, you know, contribute to the couture collection. At just 21 years old, he became Dior's successor after his death in 1957, a decision made by Dior himself. It was like he kind of somehow knew that he was going to die. So he named Saint Laurent his successor before going on a uh, trip to Italy, which ultimately, you know, that's where he passed away. Going back to Saint Laurent, Saint Laurent's stay at Dior had its highs. Obviously, one of them was, for example, the 1958 Trapeze Collection, which was very successful. However, his revolutionary vision was not a perfect match with Dior. We all know that Dior is, you know, very elegant and very sophisticated and very traditional in its silhouettes and its shapes and the interpretation of their designs. and. You know, Saint Laurent is complete opposite. So that led eventually to his dismissal alongside, obviously, with his conscription to the French army. So after a short military stint uh, due to medical reasons, he sued Dior for a breach of contract and in 1960, he won. This prompted him to establish his eponymous brand in 1961, Yves Saint Laurent, with his partner at the time, Pierre Berger. So in the early 60s, Saint Laurent uh, shaped fashion trends. He introduced the beat look in 1961, the peacoat in 1962, the thigh-high boots in 1963, and the iconic Mondrian dress in 1965. This masterpiece merged, you know, high fashion with abstract art, showcasing Saint Laurent's ability to blend creativity with craftsmanship. A pivotal moment for the brand came in 1966 with the creation of Le Smoking, which was a tuxedo jacket for women that challenged gender norms. This audacious piece became a symbol of androgynous elegance, you know, empowering women to embrace more masculine styles. Saint Laurent's designs often reflected the socio-political climate. For example, his 1968 pants, inspired by the French uprisings of 1968 obviously, contributed to making pants more acceptable for women. Yves Saint Laurent's narrative continued that same year with the introduction of the safari jackets, seamlessly blending, you know, military and outdoor elements with high fashion. So Yves Saint Laurent wanted to go beyond couture, so so he introduced his first ready-to-wear collection, Rive Gauche, in 1966, democratizing fashion and offering affordable and, you know, fashionable styles ready in the market to wear, which, by the way, he was the first French couturier to present a prêt-à-porter you know, full collection. The brand also delved into fragrances, presenting the first fragrance Y in 1964, followed by other iconic scents like Opium and La Nuit de l'Homme. In the 1970s, uh, Saint Laurent rose to prominence by designing uh, pieces that were adaptable for the current and the modern women's needs, and also for being the pioneer of the padded shoulders that were so characteristic of the 80s in 1978. So during the 80s and 90s, the brand was expanded Expanding themselves, uh, introducing the first cosmetic line in 1978. So it's a very known fact that Saint Laurent had a substance abuse problem and he faced a lot of criticism for it from people in the press saying that uh, his designs lacked inventiveness and they were boring, which obviously impacted also in his designs later on. In 1999, the group Caring uh, acquired YSL and they appointed Tom Ford to, you know, take care of the ready-to-wear line while Saint Laurent was, you know, continuing with the haute couture line. 
in 2002 due to personal and design challenges saint laurent decided to close the haute couture division and retire the brand persisted obviously after this uh, stefano pilati became the new creative director in 2004 and was succeeded by heidi slimane in 2012. so by the time that slimane took the leadership of the brand he had the purpose of rebranding it and it was no longer going to be called yves saint laurent but rather saint laurent and he also revived the haute couture collection in 2015. the next year in 2016 antonio vaccarello became the new creative director overseeing also the brand's expansion into art cinema with the launch of saint laurent productions in april of this year today the brand saint laurent you know remains a symbol of parisian chic representing high-end fashion and also you know creative expression okay so as always if you remember my video of design your brand's stylistic identity we talked about brands following into three categories authority brands iconic brands and lifestyle brands i was actually going to do you know a authority brand this time but you guys voted for saint laurent so here i am saint laurent is an iconic brand obviously because it's very much recognized for a wide range of products or inventions that are on themselves quite iconic and those products are part of their strategy and their stylistic identity like for example the tuxedo jacket the safari jacket the bondrian dress the beatnik look the pinstripe pantsuit the sac de chair lulu and monogram bags among others it also delivers universal values symbols and codes that were constructed over a period of time and and make the brand recognizable a plain sight some of them being like the broad shoulders the YSL logo minimalistic and clean lines androgynous elements black and white imagery and neutral colors but also the figure of Yves Saint Laurent was and is iconic in itself for how he lived how he was for his revolutionary vision we also said multiple times that you know iconic brands have a big component of mysticism and the creation of myths whether that is a products an invention a moment or in this case a person who is central to the popularization of the brand and it's its founder saint laurent style is characterized by several uh, key elements and principles that have left a lasting impact in the fashion industry number one is that saint laurent is known for blurring the traditional gender lines in fashion he popularized the tuxedo suit for women which became a symbol of androgynous elegance and empowerment his androgynous designs challenged societal norms and introduced a new level of sophistication and sensuality and you know a wide range of possibilities for women number two is that saint laurent was a master of tailoring and precision in his designs he emphasized you know clean lines impeccable cuts and sharp silhouettes his suits blazers and coats were known for their perfectly structured shapes you know showcasing his attention to detail the brand's designs tend to be very sleek and avoid you know a lot of embellishment and being like too overpowering allowing the quality of the materials and the construction and the cut to shine through number three is that you know saint laurent also had like his bohemian side and was inspired by this in his collections like the safari or the russian collections which feature you know flowing silhouettes and ethnic prints and rich fabrics these designs capture a sense of wanderlust and a free-spirited and romantic aesthetic while saint laurent is known for pushing the boundaries in fashion it also places a strong emphasis in creating timeless elegant pieces Iconic Iconic designs like a trench coat or a tailored blazer or some well-cut pants are, you know, wardrobe staples that are reinterpreted every season, ensuring their relevance year after year. Number five is that Yves Saint Laurent had a deep appreciation for art and a lot of his collections, you know, were inspired by the art world. The Mondrian dress is like the perfect example, directly referencing the work of Piet Mondrian. And these artistic influences can be seen in bold patterns, geometric shapes, and, you know, details in Saint Laurent's collections. Number six is that Saint Laurent employs a monochromatic palette, putting a lot of emphasis in black and whites and grays and neutral colors. This classic approach to color allows the brand to showcase their designs, focusing more on shape and structure rather than relying on color. Number seven is that Saint Laurent infuses a rock and roll edge into their designs, epitomized by the leather jacket, 
delicate and distressed denim and you know bold accessories this rebellious period has made saint laurent a favorite for musicians and rock stars and has played a significant role into shaping the brand's identity number eight is that yves saint laurent was known for experimented with new and innovative materials for his designs he used leather vinyl and other unconventional elements and materials to challenge conventions and create unique pieces number nine is that saint laurent epitomizes the essence of french chic and elegance their designs exude a timeless sophistication that is often you know associated with french fashion number 10 is that saint laurent was celebrated for his evening wear dresses he created stunning and iconic gowns and cocktail dresses that reflected his mastery of draping and luxurious materials often featuring plunging necklines sequins and very flowy silhouettes number 11 is that saint laurent produced you know so many iconic accessories such as for example the tribute and opium shoes and the muse and sac de chair bags which became you know classics so saint laurent style i would define it as a combination of innovation elegance and also a deep passion for art and culture if saint laurent's ability to push boundaries and redefine the fashion landscape has you know granted him the position of being one of the most influential designers of the whole fashion history. Overall, I think the Saint Laurent style could be defined as avant-garde and rebellious, but timeless and sophisticated at the same time. It reflects a fusion of rupturistic influences with great tailoring and high levels of craftsmanship. So some elements to have in mind to get the Saint Laurent look are First of all, great tailoring and clean, sharp lines. Then androgynous pieces to the max. Everything androgynous is very Saint Laurent. A monochromatic color palette, you know, wearing a lot of black, white, and neutrals, but also occasionally adding a touch of bold colors. Then basics mixed with statement pieces are so very much Saint Laurent. And then minimalistic jewelry combined with statement logo-based accessories. In terms of print and patterns, polka dots, flower prints, animal prints, geometry prints, and paisley. When it comes to textures and fabrics, you use a lot of velvet. Velvet blazers, dresses, pants are very common in St. Laurent's collections, adding a sense of opulence. Silk is a staple in St. Laurent's designs, um, applying into blouses, dresses, evening gowns, scarves, and St. Laurent himself used silk to create very fluid and flowy silhouettes. Then leather. Leather is a favorite material for Saint Laurent and he used it to create very iconic pieces like leather jackets, pants, uh, skirts. Saint Laurent leather pieces are known for their quality and their style. Then we have wool which is used in blazers, coats, and trousers showcasing Saint Laurent's expertise in tailoring and craftsmanship. Then we have fur which fur was so very prominent in Saint Laurent's designs especially in the form of fur trimmed coats and accessories adding you know like a touch of luxury to his clothes collections. Then we have sheer fabrics like chiffon and organza, adding an element of sensuality and femininity to his designs. And lastly, we have denim, which Saint Laurent played a huge role in popularizing denim in high fashion, creating denim jackets and jeans that were both comfortable and stylish at the same time. Okay, and lastly, in terms of actual pieces to look for, a suit, which is perhaps one of Saint Laurent's most iconic creations, in the same line, broad shoulder blazers. Then the safari jacket or you know a more modern version like utility jackets overalls jean jackets a trench coat silk shirts and blouses pea coats fur jackets classic shirts turtlenecks bohemian dresses leather pants or basically leather everything anything whatever you want quilted bags platform sandals and over the knee boots but these are just to name a few so that being said let's check out some outfit ideas to get the saint laurent look
So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know down in the comment section if you enjoyed this video and which designer would you like me to talk about next. Lastly, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications down below. And as always, I will leave the links in the description box of all of my social media so you can go check them out. I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. I'll see you in my next video. Ciao, ciao!